Friends, uh, today is uh, Friday, September 30th, 2022, and we are looking at one verse from 1 Peter 3, 1, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Here it is. In your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. It's a little bit uh, awkward in English. It's really be ready with a word uh, and, and, a, and, and a thoughtful word. That's why they use this word taken out of the courts, a defense. But it doesn't have to be defensive. It means have a thoughtful understanding of how your faith connects with issues in the world and in life so that if you're asked about it, you can, you can give an explanation that it's holds water and that has some power to it. So uh, today I want to just ask one little question of us. How, how, do you, how do you pray for teachers in your life? Because I think we need to pray for teachers, just like we need to pray for doctors and healers. We need to pray for teachers. I pray this way. I pray, first of all, that they will have a connection between their teaching and their lives, that they will be models, good models, uh, even in settings where faith uh, discussion may be, uh, explicit faith discussion may be discouraged, that they will be able to model their faith. And in the way they engage with others, in their love and compassion, the way they listen, the, the, the way they uh, give the best reading of other people's views, the extra effort they make to empower others. Uh, if, if you're a teacher and you're doing those things uh, in the way you, you are treating administrators and colleagues and kids, uh, you can have an impact because people will come to know about your faith and they'll associate your virtues with your faith. Uh, my wife, used to do a prayer group in a little school in New Jersey before the day. So before the day it officially started, uh, that's kind of, you know, many teachers are coming into school early. So she offered a prayer group that uh, wasn't sponsored by the school. It was just something she did. That was allowed. She got permission from the principal. And she eventually had 15 or 20, a good part of the faculty at that school that would come to that Bible study. They'd have their lives prayed for and their issues prayed over and uh, then they'd go about their tasks throughout the day. Um, but that meant that my wife was identified as a Christian when she, when she took that move. And of course, then eventually as a pastor's wife as well, not just a Christian, but married to a pastor. But that meant that her attention to the, to the other staff, her care for them, her willingness to go the extra mile with families, the lovely way she treated kids, got associated with her faith. And a number of people came to faith and or deepened their faith because of that example. And I, um, I laud her for that. She took this integration of teaching and faith very seriously and found ways to do it that fit in with the strictures of the school, but were still um, very powerful. And they led to opportunities outside the school to befriend, to share, to support, uh, and to, to help either uh, other people progress. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, give us a strategy wherever our workplace is, that we can integrate our faith in, that we can find ways to connect uh, our faith practices with our work practices. And we pray that teachers will be able to do that. They'll be able to model and uh, get associated with their faith the virtues that they're able to display in the, in the workplaces, in, the, in their schools. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.